morning. Welcome everyone to St. Elizabeth Anne Seton for our celebration of the sixth Sunday in ordinary time. I'm watching the live stream on my phone because we had technical difficulties, but thankfully Father knows his iPhone inside out. <laughs> and now we are looking the right way. I'll turn this off. It's wonderful to have all of you here this morning on this icy, cold, slippery day. Uh, and wonderful for all of you who are able to join us online. Thank you very much for being here. It's great to see you. Our presider is our pastor, Father Paul, who is assisted by our deacon, Mr. Tim Michaels. Let's take a moment to silence our cell phones. Could we uh, post on Facebook to say whether we're celebrating our faith? Once you've done that, um, let's silence these things. Thumbs up to Facebook. Now I'm on live stream. Let's silence these cell phones and remember how much God loves us. Bring to God all our needs. Thank you, God, for so many blessings. Please stand with me now and find your worship page so that we can proclaim together the entrance and the front. Be my protector, O oh God, a mighty stronghold to save me, for you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to those who are watching us online. Welcome to those who are brave the elements. Uh, welcome to those who are coming back to worship with us since the pandemic. Happy Valentine's Day, happy President's Day weekend, and today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are at the doorstep of the season of Lent that begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And so we ask the Lord to have mercy on us as we call upon his holy name.
Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We glorify God as we say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. We take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous, and unclean. The priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare, and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He sh shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything 
for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, <coughs> that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept, him com kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Sunday, the reading from Mark's Gospel brought us stories of Jesus healing one sick person after another, beginning at the local synagogue where he healed a possessed person, and continuing with Simon Peter's mother-in-law who was in bed with a fever. Before long, if you remember, the whole town was gathered at the door, clamoring for a healing touch. Today we have yet another healing, the healing of a leper. But this healing takes us into tricky territory because it involves more than healing. It also involves breaking the law of Moses. The leper broke the law, and so did Jesus. Let me explain. The law, when it came to lepers, was very clear. We just heard it in today's first reading from the book of Leviticus. The law said that lepers were to dwell apart and to remain as far as possible from people. And if people should chance to come near, the leper was to make his whereabouts known by shouting out, unclean, unclean. There was good reason for this. Leprosy was thought to be highly contagious and produced horrible deformities. People lived in dread of any sort of contact with those who had leprosy. And so the leper in our gospel today 
clearly broke the law by coming out of the shadows, walking right up to Jesus, kneeling down before him, and even daring to engage him in conversation. He broke the law. And so you can imagine how people must have reacted. Their reaction must have ranged from horror to indignation to fear for their lives. Fear that they would now catch the dreaded disease. But the leper was not the only one who broke the law in this story. Jesus, in allowing the leper to approach him, and then entering into conversation with him, and doing the unthinkable by himself reaching out and touching him. Jesus also broke the law. And so often in the gospel, Jesus, the devout Jew that he was, revered the law, but he simply refused to be bound or straitjacketed by it. Everything he does in this encounter makes it clear that people, people are more important to him than the law, no matter how sacred. So moved with pity, he allows the leper to come right up to him. He converses with him and goes even further by touching him. Jesus knew that this poor outcast of a man who had been living on the outer margins of society needed more than just physical healing. He needed a human encounter, human contact, human warmth. And that's why he did the truly unthinkable, reaching out and touching him. And in doing so, he not only gave him healing, he also gave him love and acceptance. He welcomed him back into the community. I can't help but think of Pope Francis and his efforts to reach out to people in marriages that are not recognized by the church for whatever reason, or his efforts in making it easier to streamline the annulment process. He knows that many of them feel like lepers and outcasts. And so he's intent on doing everything he can to reach out to them, to assure them that they are indeed loved, part of the family, part of the community. And none of this is about flaunting the law. Jesus may bend the law, but he also honors it, just as Pope Francis honors church teaching. Jesus honors the law, surely, when he tells the man to go and show himself to the priest and then make the customary offering called for by the law of Moses. Curiously, he also tells the man to keep quiet about the healing. That's most likely because Jesus doesn't want people to get a skewed, one-sided notion of what it means for him to be the Messiah. But the leper doesn't keep quiet. Once he's healed, he can't contain himself. He immediately goes about spreading the story. Wouldn't you? I certainly would. And that's where this story gets a fascinating little twist to it. The more the news gets out that Jesus has healed the leper, the more he is sworn, literally sworn, wherever he goes. Everyone wants a piece of him. Everyone's, everyone wants his healing touch. So much so that as the writer Mark puts it today, it becomes impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly, and he has to remain outside the town in a deserted place. You see the twist there, the irony? Jesus is now the one who has to dwell apart from the community, and in a sense, Jesus has become the leper. Sisters and brothers, the Jesus of this story is the same Jesus we call out to from whatever leprosy it may be that holds us in its grip. Fear, sin, pain, alienation, confusion, doubt, it matters not. The leper's prayer is our prayer. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Lord, if you will, you can calm my fears. 
Lord, if you will, you can set me free. And this is a prayer that Jesus hears. He always is moved to pity by our prayer for help. He stretches out his hand to us, touches us, and gently assures us, I do will it, be healed. The story is told of a Florida businessman, Ferdinand Mafoud, who in the 1980s organized relief efforts for the poor in the Caribbean. One of my first visits to leprosariums, he wrote, I shrank from touching anyone. The sight of so many bodies so ravaged by this terrible disease left me shaken and fearful. Jesus, I prayed one day, I know you want me to love these sick people as much as you have loved them. Please help me to express your love by touching them. It wasn't easy to shake hands with the next leprosy patient I encountered, but that was the turning point. Truly, God makes his grace well up inside of us when we ask him to help us. As with the leper, Jesus puts us and our needs first. He puts them before any laws or rules. He is here now to walk on us as he did the leper. His word is full of power for our healing. His Eucharist is full of nourishment and strength for our journey. And like the leper, let us approach him with confidence and feel his healing touch. Stand. We profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not me. Not substantial to the Father. To him all things remain. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who when the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the Lord for the resurrection of the dead. Together, as one voice, we turn to our merciful, ever-present God with our prayers and petitions. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that we may reach out to those who have been marginalized by society and offer acceptance and inclusion in our community. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that God will inspire world leaders to take bold steps to 
to end violence and promote justice through dialogue and understanding. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For openness to the Spirit, that we may be attentive to the invitations of God to grow and change during the coming Lenten season. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that God will continue to deepen their love and help their relationship give witness to God's loving presence in the world. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Val Lynch, who we remember especially at this Mass, for all those who are seriously ill or hospitalized, especially those suffering from the coronavirus, that God will ease their pain Help them to receive life-enhancing treatment and restore them to their loved ones. And for all who have recently died, including Bob Brooks and those who had COVID-19, may they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our sister parishes in Haiti and Baltimore, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. Lord. Loving God, trusting in your saving power, we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. You may be seated. brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are indeed holy. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more gave you thanks. He gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, drink this cup, we proclaim your death until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray the words that Jesus himself once prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and our sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and our sins. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hands of them. They ate and had their fill, and what they prayed the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they prayed. Please be seated. When we receive communion here, we stand when the Eucharistic minister arrives and put our hands out flat in front of us. Take the host in our hand. And when the Eucharistic minister goes to the next group of people, it's then that we take that mask off and see the host. Put the mask back on, up the nose and mouth. Thank you.
today's announcements. If you are not comfortable attending Ash Wednesday Mass in person, the 9 a.m. Mass will be live streamed and the church will be open from 1 p.m. till 4 p.m. for anyone who would like to receive ashes. Parish offices will be closed tomorrow, Monday, in observance of President's Day. There is no 9 a.m. Mass. Please sign up for next weekend's Masses through the parish website or Facebook page. The link is available after the 9.30 a.m. Mass each Sunday. Poor Box contributions this week will benefit the Bowie Crofton Pregnancy Center. You can support our weekly Poor Box by donating online through Gift Central. And thank you for your continued generosity toward the offertory. If you attend Mass in person, offertory gifts can be placed in the basket in the narthex. Otherwise, please continue to send in your envelopes or sign up online through Give Central. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just another brief announcement. Uh, next Friday, uh, of, uh, next week, uh, we will have in person Stations of the Cross with benediction. We will not be having, uh, we will not be offering you the booklets for the Stations of the Cross. Brendan will provide a worship aid that will be attached to the flock note on Fridays. Uh, so just download, as you would for Sunday Mass, the worship aid for the Stations and bring that with you. But we will not be handing out uh, those physical booklets for the Stations. And you don't have to sign up. Uh, you just come to the church, the ushers will help you find a seat, much like the procedure that we have for daily mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated uh, before Brendan. Uh, makes the announcement about our dismissal, just please, please, please be careful walking out to your cars and be safe as you drive home today. Have a good weekend, everybody. Brendan, you're on. <laughs> the ushers are directing our safe exit from the church via the central aisle, and the way, just like the yellow brick road, is signposted with blue social distance lines. Please keep the distance from the people ahead of you and behind you. Especially when you get out there, go straight to your cars, be careful. The ushers will invite you to stand and uh, leave. Don't please stand. You can sit there at the back until invited to do so by the ushers. Have a great weekend.